You guys asked for it, and here it is. The Platinum Trophy 4. Red Dead Redemption is one of the most critically acclaimed games of all time, with more awards than Clint Eastwood in a squinting contest. Since I've already got the Platinum Trophy for RDR2, I thought it would be a lot of fun to revisit the OG Red Dead Redemption. To get the Platinum Trophy, all I have to do is complete 57 story missions and hit 100% completion on a single player campaign. I'll also need to reach max level in multiplayer mode, which is level 50. Ah! But if I intend to get this done, I need to get the first trophy of the game, that government boy, where I need to get shot. No, seriously, watch as John walks up like an idiot to Bill Williamson's fortress and asks him to surrender. It goes about as well as you'd expect. Thankfully, a couple of good Samaritans saved my life, and I earned my trophy, for being the dumbest outlaw this side of New Mexico. A couple of missions later, Bonnie challenges me to a race to familiarize me with the horse riding mechanic, and I immediately discover that things are very different from RDR2. As I rapidly tap the cross button, I'm expecting my horse to accelerate, but instead, it does this. <sighs> Turns out if you tap the button too many times, your horse will get mad at you and toss you to the ground. Then I ran into even more problems as I discovered that my steed maneuvers like a lead bathtub on roller skates. <laughs> Since I normally don't like to jump off cliffs with my horse, I give it another try. This time, my horse pulls to the left, and I die. Again. I have no idea what's going on here. Like, is the game's horse handling just bad, or does this particular horse just hate me for some reason? I pass the bridge on my third try, but it's very clear that Red Dead Redemption's horse physics are very different from its successor. And don't think we're done with the horse shenanigans just yet, because there's a trophy called Spur to Victory that requires me to complete 20 story missions without once changing my horse at the hitching post. This is the only missable trophy in the entire game, which means I need to get it over with as early as possible. Fortunately, it's also a really easy trophy since I can just use this gold colored stallion that I got as a reward for breaking in horses with Bonnie McFarlane. It's one of the best early horses you can get in Red Dead Redemption, and I intend to keep it for as long as possible. Well. I'm tired after a day of hard work. Time to grab some rest. We've got some trophies to collect tomorrow. The next day. <sighs> it ran away. My Kentucky Sadler that I received as a gift is gone because I forgot how hitching works in this game. Dang it. Oh, well, I'll just make do with my Black Warhorse. Right now, I'm trying to collect the Strange Things Are a Foot trophy, which I'll get for helping out a stranger. And would you look at that? I just found one in the middle of the desert. What luck. Hello, miss. How may I help you? Clearly, the lady has lost her mind after spending hours stranded in the desert heat. So I bring her some medicine from a nearby town, and she thinks that God himself sent me to rescue her. She declines a ride back into town, so I leave her to die in the desert, which earns me 50 fame and 100 honor. And there's my trophy. Remember that trophy for completing 20 missions in a row with the same horse? I got it after helping a snake oil salesman escape from an angry mob. At the end of the mission, right as my trophy pops, I call for my horse and it shows up, along with some uninvited guests who try to turn my leg into a McDonald's Happy Meal. Shoo! Bad dog! Well, the puppers don't really give me a choice, so I pulled an Uno Reverse on them and harvested their meat instead. Don't worry, I'm not some kind of savage. I'm just trying to get Master Hunter rank 3 done, which requires me to kill and skin 5 wolves. 2 down, 3 more to go. For my next trophy, Land of Opera opportunity, I'll need to break into Fort Mercer and capture an old friend. That's right, I'm going back for Bill Williamson. He won't get away this time since I've got a posse of gunfighters with me, including Marshal Lee Johnson and his deputies. Inside, I find a whole squad of Bill Williamson's thugs, but the con man Nigel has hooked me up with something special. Say hello to my little friend. After turning the residents of Fort Mercer into Swiss cheese with my Gatling gun, I find out that the coward Bill has escaped into Mexico to find his old buddy Javier Escuela. Yep, looks like the old gang is coming back together. Just not in the way I expected. After collecting my trophy, I jump on a boat and head south into Mexico with an Irishman as my guide. I don't think he speaks much Spanish, but at least he knows the way to Javier Escuela's hideout. While traveling through the river, we're assaulted by the Mexican Border Patrol. Or are these more of Bill's thugs? It doesn't matter because I'm gonna murder the shit out of them either way. One of the guys was trying to throw a stick of dynamite at me, but I shot his hand, blowing up the dynamite and ragdolling him into the river. That was pretty funny, let's do it again. And a third time! Inside Mexico, I'm greeted by the welcoming committee who demand an immigration tax. But since I'm not carrying any pesos with me, I decide to pay them in lead instead. I don't know if this is going to improve US-Mexico relations, but it sure as hell tells the locals that they shouldn't mess with me. After filling up every graveyard in Nuevo Parezo, I think it's time to collect the bullseye trophy. For this, I need to get a total of 250 headshots in any game mode. And with all the mayhem I've been causing in Mexico, I think I'm pretty close. 
To get a headshot in Red Dead Redemption, all you have to do is aim at the chest and flick up slightly so your crosshair snaps to the head. Or you can just use Deadeye like this. And there's the Bullseye Trophy for 250 headshots. Let's go. For my next two trophies, I'll be dealing with my old friends Javier Escuela and Bill Williamson. First up is the trophy Sons of Mexico, which I'll get by assaulting Javier's hideout with a bunch of rebels, provided to me courtesy of Mr. Abraham Reyes. <clears throat> Mr. Reyes, you there? Okay, I guess I'll just come back later. Anyway, Reyes gives me the coordinates to Javier's positions, and I dropped a 45 caliber airstrike on his rented thugs. Damn, that was awesome. Hey, Javier, remember when you backstabbed me and Arthur to side with Dutch instead? Javier slips away by dropping an Amazon crate on me, but I chase him down and bring him in for a very long jail sentence. Or a really short one, depending on how long the hangman takes. Wait, how do you get people off your horse in this game? It's been so long since I last played, like I've forgotten how horses work. And now my horse is trying to walk through the wall. Eventually, I hand Javier over to the FBI and get my trophy. Next up is Bill Williamson. But before that, let me grab the trophy Long Armor of Marston by securing 500 rifle kills, which funnily enough, popped after my death, like an autopsy report. Because the PS3 is a total pig and takes forever to register the fact that you completed the trophy conditions. After clearing out the remaining trash from the town, I finally get my hands on Bill Williamson. And let me tell you, he is pissed. Dutch wanted you dead. We all did. Well, I'm going after him next. I'll outlive all of you. You always was a traitor, you bastard orphan. And you always was a dumb inbred hick. With Bill and Javier down, there's just one guy left from the old gang, Mr. Dutch Vanderlind himself. And he's an extra valuable target because I'm about to get two trophies for chasing him down. First, the trophy A Savage Soul for finding Dutch and his gang up in the mountains. Yep, that's him right there. Shooting defenseless people in the back just like the good old days. Wait, he's pointing the gun at me, isn't he? Okay, first of all, that was a hell of a shot. Secondly, Marston needs to start identifying as a cat given how many lives he has. Dutch may have destroyed my binoculars, but I'm about to destroy his soul. For the trophy benefits of civilization, I'm going to assault his base with the US Army as my backup. Not like I need them, because Marson is basically a one-man army who drinks a cocktail of gunpowder and whiskey for breakfast. Few people know this, but when Chuck Norris goes to sleep, he checks under his bed for John Marson. Okay, these jokes are out of hand. After liberating a few dozen of Dutch's men from the burden of living, John grows tired of shooting his Schofield and instead bitch slaps a guy to death with it. Good night, amigo. Soon, I catch up to the main man himself, and it looks like he's got nowhere to run. Give it up, Dutch, I promise. We'll visit Tahiti together. It'll just be like the old days. Our time has passed. Yeah. What a shame. Anyway, my job here is done. The FBI is really happy with my performance, and Agent Ross tells me I can return to my wife and son in Beecher's Hope. And there's my trophy. Sweet. The story is almost over, and there's just one more main mission trophy left, Into the Sunset. You get this trophy by milking cows with Jack and singing romantic songs to Abigail. I'm sure everyone lived happily ever after and nothing bad ever happened right? Actually, no, because the Marson Ranch is invaded by a bunch of federal agents, and John dies a martyr's death to save his family. Boy, if you thought the tearjerkers are limited exclusively to Red Dead Redemption 2, you're wrong. Dead wrong. The mission ends with a now adult Jack staring at his parents' grave, a flame of vengeance glowing in his eyes as he puts on his father's hat and heads off into the sunset. And with that, all 57 story missions have been completed. Whew, that took a while. For the next stage of my Platinum run, I'm going to 100% the single player campaign while playing as Jack. This is the longest section of the Platinum run and we've got a lot of work to do, so buckle up. My first goal is to complete every single gang hideout in the game within 24 hours. They're basically enemy outposts that can be secured similar to how you do it in Far Cry. And yes, these are 24 in-game hours. What, you think I'm some kind of no-lifer who's never touched grass in his life? Y you don't think that, right? Clearing all seven hideouts of their criminal occupants within 24 hours will give me the US Marshal outfit, as well as three trophies. Let's kick things off with Austin Overpowered. I target the hideout in Gap Tooth Breach because... Them bastards in Gap Tooth Breach got my friend, Floyd. Are right, you hang tight, mister. I'll bring Floyd back to you. Shh, nobody tell him I really don't care about Floyd. I'm just here for the treasure. An easy $177 in my pocket. And with all the thugs dead, Gap Tooth Breach is clear, baby. At Twin Rocks, which is the next hideout, I meet a rancher whose daughter has been kidnapped by the Walton Gang. It takes me a grand total of 50 seconds to free the girl and complete this hideout. Then we get to Pike's Basin, where a bunch of thugs from the Bothered Gang have stolen a man's cattle. I kill every last cattle rustling SOB in the basin with extreme prejudice, securing the third and final hideout for the Austin Overpowered Trophy. Let's go. For Instinto Asesino, I'll need to clear Nosilada and Fort Mercer. 
First, I go to Fort Mercer, which used to be Bill Williamson's old home. Nowadays, it's occupied by a group of Mexican bandits who call themselves, wait for it, the Banditos. I know, real creative stuff. After climbing the wall of the fort and dead eyeing every bandejo inside, I treat myself to the contents of two treasure chests, which adds a couple hundred dollars to my bank account. And with that, Fort Mercer is complete. The second hideout in Nocilada was also a lot of fun as I got to burn down a bunch of rebel buildings while fighting alongside the Mexican army. At the end, the Mexican general personally rewards me. And there's my trophy. All right, just one more gang hideout trophy to collect, Evil Spirits. For this, I needed to complete Tumbleweed and Tesoro Azul hideouts. In Tumbleweed, I free a captured sheriff and turned the ghost town full of gangsters into an even bigger ghost town by killing every single carbon-based life form in sight. Look at that, done. Note that my fame is also climbing up as I complete these gang hideouts. I'm going to need max fame and honor for a different trophy, so keep an eye on that bar as it goes up. The final hideout is Tesoro Azul, where I roll in like Clint Eastwood and distribute free lead pills to a bunch of bad guys. In the end, I rescue a lawman who's being held hostage by blowing off the hostage taker's head. This completes the hideout, earning me the Evil Spirits trophy. With all of the gang hideout trophies collected, you might be thinking we're done with hideouts for the rest of the video. And you would be right. Were it not for the multiplayer trophy, How the West Was Won, which requires an insane amount of grind to get to level 50, meaning I'll have to do even more hideouts in multiplayer. But we'll burn that bridge when we get to it. Or was it cross that bridge? My next goal in this 100% completion stage is to do all the bounties, of which there are 20. I don't have to do all 20 as there's no trophy for completing every single one, but you'll see why I'm grinding these very soon. First, I get the Clemency Pays trophy by hunting down a bounty target and lassoing him instead of killing him on the spot. The poster said dead or alive, and I'm going to turn this guy over to the law so I can get my trophy for being the kindest bounty hunter in the country. And there it is. I'm also making a decent bit of cash with these bounties, and I'll need it for the trophy more than a fistful, which requires me to earn $10,000 in the single player mode. That's why I'm grinding all 20 bounties so I can earn the money. And I also get to kill a lot of people, which comes in handy for securing the next trophy in a hell of bullets. I get it by gunning down my 500th enemy while doing a bounty mission. Gangsters aren't the only thing Jack kills, as I get the trophy Manifest Destiny for killing Buffalo. You see, Red Dead Redemption's map has a finite number of buffalo, and they only appear as a herd of 20 in the Great Plains, just west of Blackwater. This part is locked until after the Mexico Story missions, and the buffalo will try to run away in different directions as soon as you start shooting. But just like in real life, these guys don't respawn, which means you can chase down the last buffalo and get the Manifest Destiny trophy. PETA is definitely not gonna like this one. While doing my hunting challenges, I was looking for some foxes. Instead, I got ambushed by a gang of grizzly bears, who you might have noticed are just a little bit bigger. Man, where do these guys keep coming from? And now a boar is trying to shove its head up my horse's ass. What is this, the Jungle Book? Next thing you know, Mowgli's gonna be swinging out of those trees. I'm deliberately parking my horse right above the bear carcass to cancel the skinning animation, because this game has a nasty habit of spawning bears right next to you. Kind of like this. Are you shitting me, Rockstar 3 at the same time? But it's fine, because I got a trophy for killing and skinning 18 grizzly bears. Wanna guess what it's called? Barely legal. And we aren't done with the bears just yet because there's a trophy called Frontiersman for obtaining the legendary rank in any single player challenge. And I got this trophy by completing Master Hunter 10 in which I slay Brumas, the legendary bear. Sorry, friend. I promise I'll make a nice rug out of you. And there's the trophy, guys. I can barely contain my excitement. Okay, no more stupid puns, I promise. While doing my trophies, I've also completed the many challenges in Red Dead Redemption. These include Master Hunter, Survivalist, and Treasure Hunter. The last one gave me a bunch of gold bars, which I then sold to get $10,000. And you know what that means? We've got more than a fistful of dollars. Let's go. Oh, and let me know if you want me to do a separate video for all the challenges in RDR1. Sounds like it'd be a lot of fun. And what good is money without something to spend it on? So let's go grab ourselves the finest firearms in the West. Because as you guys know, Jack Marston doesn't settle for cattlemen or revolvers. He is a man of exquisite taste. The Mauser, Evans Repeater, the rifle that killed JFK, you can't get a better collection than this. On top of exquisite weaponry, the OG Red Dead Redemption also allows you to purchase houses. I understand why they couldn't add this to RDR2 since you spend most of the game running from camp to camp with your gang, but it could have been an option in the epilogue, or at least in Red Dead Online. Anyway, there's a trophy for discovering every single location in the game called On the Trail of Devaka. Since there are 94 locations in total and I don't feel like going on a grand tour to discover every single one, I just walk into a general store and buy some maps. I keep foreign and Jewish made goods out of my store. Help our American families. Uh, yeah, good day to you as well, racist storekeeper man. Using the Diaz Coronas map unravels the final undiscovered location, earning me the trophy. I'm tired of all this grinding, so how about we play some mini games to relax? Plus, there's even more trophies to be won there. Now, where's that poker table? Bingo! 
They say you pass with the pistola. I think I am faster. Sure, pal. It's your grave. And to no one's surprise, Gonzalo ends up with more holes in the plot of Batman vs. Superman. Now, that's some serious lead poisoning there, amigo. Naturally, turning a man into Swiss cheese with my pistols and terrorizing the innocent townsfolk earns me fame. Maxing out the gauge and unlocking the trophy Man of Honor, Chivalry's dead. To calm my nerves, I play some poker, where I can earn the trophy High Roller by winning over 2,000 chips in a single hand. I call it 502 with an ace high straight. Unfortunately for Bunk Trimble, He's got a pair of jacks and busts, which means I get the entire pot of 2,508 chips. And there's my trophy, high roller, for being a poker god. Let's go. Next, I unlocked the trophy What About Hand Grenades by getting a ringer in a game of horseshoes, which required a bit of luck and some practice to get just right. For the final minigame related trophy, No Dice, I need to win a game of Liar's Dice without losing a single die. And just like Dutch, I've got a plan. See, there's this really special suit that allows you to cheat at mini games called the Elegant Suit. It costs $70, and you even unlock a trophy for purchasing it, called He Cleans Up Well. You're damn right, I'm about to clean house with this suit. All right, pal, might as well hand over your money because there's no way you're gonna beat me. What the hell, why is my suit working? I lost a die for calling a valid bid and realized that my Elegant Suit only allows me to cheat at poker, not liar's dice, just poker. Well, so much for that plan. Guess we'll do this the hard way. Round two, I declared a bid spot on, but I was wrong, so I lose a dice and I have to start all over again. Round three, I make it farther into the game by successfully calling out a bluff. Then one of the AI players calls out the other guy's bluff, which means I still haven't lost a single die. All right, things are looking pretty good so far. Just a few more rounds and lose. Oh, God damn it, not again. I lost again, and again, and again. I've probably got up and sat down on that chair so many times that Jack's butt is imprinted on it by now. Who knew that the hardest part of my platinum run would be a simple game of Liar's Dice? It became so frustrating that after what felt like 17 billion attempts, I finally lost my cool and tried attacking one of the NPCs to make him leave. Get out of here, shoo! Can't you see I'm threatening you? My tactical jumps have no effect on the NPC, so I pull out my trusty Mauser and point it at his head to make my intentions clear. This has the unintended consequence of driving literally everyone out of the saloon, except for the guy I actually wanted to leave. He sits back down. Bro, I was literally trying to kill you. Are you insane? <sighs> All right, I guess I'm gonna sit down. Whoa, not like that. What the hell have I done? Now the game's glitched out, the chair's floating in the air, and Jack tried to sit on the other guy's lap like he's Santa Claus. Reloading my save fixes the glitch, and more importantly, it kicks away the third guy, turning the game into a much more predictable 1v1. Perfect, now we can finally win this. I knew it was gonna be easier, but I didn't expect the difficulty to drop this drastically, as I absolutely destroyed the other guy. Always a pleasure playing with an amateur. Yeah, you said it, Jack. That guy's such a loser. And there's the trophy. With all the minigame related trophies completed, it's time to mop up the remaining single player trophies. Remember that stranger mission we did earlier when I helped that lady in the desert? Well, you get another trophy for completing 15 of these missions called People Are Still Strange. I unlocked this trophy while doing a mission for a preacher who really hates alcohol and ended up making an enemy out of a bar owner who says he's gonna charge me double the usual rate. Big deal, I don't drink. Now there's just one more stranger mission to complete, after which I'll achieve 100% completion in Red Dead Redemption. Right now, you can see I'm sitting at 99.5%, minutes away from my 100% trophy, which is called Redeemed. So what is this final stranger mission? Well, I'm glad you asked, because I've saved the best for last. Remember when I told you I finished all 57 main story missions? Technically I did, but there's still one job left to do. Jack needs to find and kill Agent Ross, the scumbag who authorized the hit on his father. This isn't about redemption. This is about vengeance and making sure that justice is served. And even though it is classified as a stranger mission, it's actually the final story mission of the game, as well as the last chronological mission in the Red Dead series. Because after this, Jack puts his gun away and quits the outlaw life, realizing that it isn't what his father would have wanted for him. After speaking with a federal agent, Jack finds out that Ross is now retired and lives with his wife in a shack near Lake Don Julio. After talking with Edgar's wife, I find that he's gone hunting with his brother. Before leaving, Jack drops one of the coldest lines in the entire Red Dead series. And don't worry about a thing. I'm sure your husband will be just fine. I confront Edgar, who's fishing all by himself next to the river. This reminds me of that scene in RDR 2, where Ross tells a much younger Jack to enjoy his fishing while he still can. I guess life catches up to us all. Jack could have shot Edgar in the back, but he wants to look his father's killer in the eyes as he guns him down with his Mauser. With that, justice has finally been served, and John and Abigail have been avenged. And there's the title screen, just beautiful. But my platinum run is far from over. 
Once the credits are done rolling, I get my trophy Nurture or Nature for finishing off Ross. And since I've got 100% completion in the single player, I also get the Redeem trophy while teabagging Edgar's freshly deceased corpse. Look, the a-hole deserved it, okay? Now that I've got 100% completion on the single player campaign, I just need a few more miscellaneous trophies before I get to the multiplayer section. And despite being relatively simple tasks, a few of these trophies gave me a lot more trouble than I was planning for. We could use another sucker. Are you a sucker? The hell did you just say to me? And now I'm gonna beat the crap out of you. I square up on the guy, but um... Eventually, I back the guy up against the wall and surprise him with a couple of haymakers. He immediately goes to sleep. The trick here is to position yourself so that you don't aggro too many NPCs or else they'll gang up on you. Like this. I quickly realize that I won't be able to take out both of them at the same time and attempt to escape, but then... My horse runs into the water like an idiot and dies. A few brawls later, I find myself in a 3v1 in a shady Mexican bar, but my skills have improved, so I managed to knock out exactly one guy before escaping. This was also the last bar out of seven, so I unlocked the fight in Around the World trophy. Russell Crowe would be proud of me. And now for the trophy that got that one channel banned from YouTube. I'm just kidding, I'm not gonna feed a feminist to an alligator, but I will hogtie a woman and watch her get run over by a train. No, I'm not some psycho, at least I don't think I am. Trust me, I'm just doing this to get the dastardly trophy, okay? And I'm definitely not targeting prostitute, I mean ladies of the night on purpose. They just happen to be right in front of me when I pulled out my lasso. Trust me, ma'am, I'm doing you a favor. Usually I charge extra for this, honey. Yeah, I bet you do. I know it looks really weird me riding around with a half-naked woman tied up on the back of my horse, but believe me, I'm not into any of that. I just want to throw her on the train tracks for a trophy, like this. A worthy sacrifice for the trophy gods. Wait, where's my trophy? Why didn't that pop? Uh, I guess we're doing this all over again? During my second attempt, I chased down the train and tried to get ahead of it when this happens. <laughs> Thanks for the moral support, pal. Once again, the woman is run over by the train, but the trophy doesn't pop. Guess we'll do it a third time. All right, this is getting into sadistic territory. For my third attempt, I switched things up by hog tying a more classy woman who's probably someone's wife or mother. Sorry, man, but this has to be done. Fingers crossed, hoping this works. Come on, come on. Yes, it worked, finally. Next is a trophy called Buckin' Awesome that requires me to break three horse breeds, the Kentucky Saddler, the American Standard Bread, and the Hungarian Halfbred. I've already tamed the Kentucky Saddler for a story mission and took care of the Hungarian Halfbred during a stranger mission. All that's left is the American Standard Bread, this guy right here. Come on, pal, I won't hurt you. But if you waste my time, I promise I'll send you off to the glue factory. Breaking horses in this game is sort of similar to how you do it in RDR2, and it only takes a few seconds for the American Standard Bread to calm down and accept me as its new master. And there's the trophy. There's a trophy called Unnatural Selection, for which I must kill one of every single animal species in the game. I've already hunted every one of these during my Master Hunter challenges, except for one creature, the Humble Seagull, also known by some as the Rats of the Sky. Since I'm already in Blackwater, I head out to the docks where there's probably dozens of these guys flying around. I mean one, just one. Really? I don't know why I thought there would be more seagulls at the beach, but here you go. I unlocked the trophy. For the trophy mowing them down, I need to score 500 kills with a mounted weapon, which is one of the harder trophies in the game due to the amount of grinding involved. You only get to use mounted weapons like the Gatling gun in certain parts of the game, which means that your window of opportunity is fairly limited. Some guides recommend that you do this in Undead Nightmare mode, but I've got a different idea. I'm going to use the El Matadero safe house. It's like any other safe house in the game with a slight distinction. There's a Maxim machine gun mounted on the roof with an unlimited supply of ammo and plenty of locals within reach for me to mow down. As I kill more of these guys, I draw lawmen, lots of lawmen. Either I'm invisible or these NPCs are really stupid because they keep walking into my line of fire, even though I've murdered a small army of them within like the last 20 minutes. After finishing my World War I reenactment, which took about 40 minutes in total, I finally popped the trophy mowing them down for killing more Mexicans than the cartels. The next trophy is called Gold Medal, and you get it by earning a gold medal in a single player combat mission. The best mission to farm this trophy is Old Swindler Blues, which has only four enemies and can be ended within a couple of minutes if you know what you're doing. To get the gold medal in this mission, I'll have to be very precise and score only headshots in Deadeye so I can finish it within the fastest possible time. That's enemy number one, enemy number two, number three, and four. And I've got myself a gold medal, perfect. And there's another trophy that involves precise aim called the Gunslinger. For this one, I'm not allowed to use aim assist, which means I'll have to turn on expert targeting mode. Even if you have the aim of a drunk stormtrooper and can't hit the broadest side of the broadest barn, getting this trophy shouldn't be a challenge, thanks to Deadeye. Or if you can't even be bothered to do that, just walk up to a stationary target like this and blow his head off. 
Can't miss when you're so close that your gun's muzzle is parked inside the other guy's throat. Yeah, I'm the gunslinger, baby. Nobody is this good at shooting people from five inches away. I'm the man. The next two trophies are actually somewhat tough, and I'll be trying to get both at the same time. One is called Friends in High Places, and for it, I'll need to obtain a bounty of $5,000 with a pardon letter in my inventory, so I can pardon myself later at the train station. The second trophy is called Heading South on a White Bronco, and for this one, I'll have to evade the US Marshals while riding my Hungarian half-bred. US Marshals only show up once you've killed 20 sheriffs, so putting two and two together, you can probably guess what I'm about to do next. Yep, I'm gonna go on a massive rampage to get a $5,000 bounty, and then I'm gonna escape the US Marshals on my Hungarian half-bred, the deed for which I purchased just before beginning my killing spree. This should have given me two trophies at the same time if my game didn't freeze. After 22 minutes of grinding kills, on my second attempt, I killed way more than 20 cops, but I didn't see a single US Marshal, which is weird. I mean, I've never seen anything like this before. So I went to sleep and saved, which fixed the game and spawned a US Marshal. But then I killed him and they stopped spawning again. And so I went to sleep and saved my game a second time, which fixed the issue. Since I don't want to take any chances this time, I held off on killing the US Marshal until I got on my horse. All right, time's up, bitch. Goodbye and good riddance. And there's the trophy, heading south on a white Bronco for evading the US Marshals. Technically, I murdered all of them, but killing is the best form of evasion. They can't chase after you if there's nobody left. Originally, I had planned to get the $5,000 bounty trophy first, and then I was going to run away on my Hungarian half-bred. But as you can see, things turn out differently, and now we're forced to do things in reverse. Not ideal, but I'll manage. Once more, I get up on my trusty shooting spot on the roof of this building and start blasting away at everything and everyone to draw as many lawmen as I can. But this must have been the slowest and least threatening gathering of lawmen ever recorded in RDR1. Not only did it take an eternity for the cops to show up in decent numbers, but as you can see, they can't even be detected on the minimap. Weird. I'm just gonna have to keep my head in a swivel at all times so I don't get blindsided. All right, I finally got a bounty of over $5,000. Sweet. The hardest part of this trophy is behind me. Now I can simply hit up a train station and hand over my pardon letter to the clerk to collect my tro- Oh, first the glitches and now this? This game really doesn't want me to get this trophy. All right, attempt number two. And this time I'm gonna ride around on a horse so I can't fall and die. I'm already on the ground. Can't get any lower than this. Well, I mean, I could walk, but that wouldn't look as cool as riding on a horse, and we all know looking cool is the most important part of being a gamer. Thankfully, I managed to collect a bounty of $5,000 without the game crashing or freezing on me, and I even made it to the train station without running into any trains or ditches or landmines. After handing my pardon letter to the clerk, my bounty is removed, earning me the Friends in High Places trophy. God, that took a while. Thankfully, it was also the last of the miscellaneous trophies I have to earn in Red Dead Redemption. But now... I have to do the much dreaded multiplayer trophies. Yeah. Let's see, online multiplayer. We've got normal, hardcore, friendly, normal's good. Oh man, this brings back memories. Both good and bad. Look, there's actually players online. You guys, this is a 14 year old PS3 game and people are still playing online. Isn't gaming awesome? However, my amazement quickly turns into disappointment when I realize that I'm a literal newbie with nothing but a cattleman revolver, a knife, and a hatchet in his inventory. Oh, and take a look at my glorious ride. <laughs> Little fella is too small to even jump over the fence. While browsing through the list of players, I get my head blown off and remember that I can't just stand around like an idiot in free roam PVP. All right, fine, time to collect my first trophy. This one's called Red Dead Rockstar, and it's the easiest multiplayer trophy you can get. The way it works is you have to kill someone who's either a Rockstar employee or a player who's killed a Rockstar employee. I don't think there are any Rockstar employees still playing the game in 2024, as they're all probably busy with GTA 6, but that's no problem, because this is a viral trophy. It spreads really fast, and most guys in the game should have it by now. I snuck up behind a piece of cover in this alleyway and found my first PvP victim. Goodbye, Pavio. And now I'm a Red Dead Rockstar. Perfect, now we can move on to the difficult trophies. The single most grindy and difficult trophy in Red Dead Redemption's multiplayer is called How the West Was Won. And to unlock it, I must reach level 50, the highest multiplayer rank in this game. It requires a whopping 337,110 XP. And if you've got no idea what that means, let me just say that it's supposed to take a really long time, like two weeks or more of grinding. Currently in 2024, the best and also the only viable way to progress this trophy is by loading into a friendly free roam session and grinding gang hideouts. If you thought we were done with the hideouts in single player, you were very much mistaken. One of the reasons this trophy is so grindy is because Rockstar released patch 1.02 in June of 2010, which nearly halved the amount of XP you get from gang hideouts. 
and trust me, you will replay them again and again if you want this trophy. At first, things went smoothly, as I cleared out the Tesoro Azul hideout with ease, earning over 1200 XP. Then I completed Nosilada in under 4 minutes, scoring another 800 XP. But things took a downward turn at Salomon's Folly, where I was dropped by a Walton Gang NPC almost immediately after beginning the hideout. Then I hit another roadblock, quite literally, in Gaptooth Breach while pushing a minecart full of gold through a valley of hostile treasure hunters. See that stagecoach on the track? It's not supposed to be there. I don't know who parked this thing in the middle of the tracks like this, but I'm now unable to get to my next checkpoint with my minecart. Look, I like I can't even get the damn thing to move out of the way. Come on, think. Like, how do you get this thing off the tracks? Oh, uh, that's a good idea. I'm gonna kill the horses and ram the coach as hard as I can. Okay, it budged only slightly, but it's worth trying. Let's ram it again. Nope, this cart doesn't have enough momentum to move that coach. After multiple failed tries and an eternity of reversing the mine cart, I tried blowing up the coach with a stick of dynamite. That didn't work. Instead, I blew myself to pieces. This is beginning to get really frustrating. As I respawned and whistled for my horse, I had an idea. Why not use the horse to ram into the coach? It's a lot faster and stronger than me, so I give it a try. And it worked! It actually worked! I was able to move the coach enough for my cart to just barely slip through. The last checkpoint was right there, and I got a whole 1,353 XP for my troubles. Was it worth it? Absolutely not. But it was an interesting exercise, as I managed to power through an otherwise game-breaking glitch with sheer will and ingenuity. I just hope something like this doesn't ever happen again. And just a few minutes later, something did happen, just not what I expected. After completing the Pike Space and Hideout, I received an abnormally large amount of XP, over 2.1 billion to be exact. And there's only one explanation for this. The other guy in the lobby must have been a modder. It has to be, there's no other way something like this happens. And it ruined my entire experience, as I invested nearly 30 hours into the game at this point all that effort just so i could have the most difficult trophy in the game handed over to me for free this sucks it really does grinding the same hideout over and over is hardly fun or engaging but at least it's something you're doing with your own input and it's a matter of choice but this this is just disappointing still i've got to move on there's more multiplayer trophies to unlock and a platinum to get i guess i finally got the trophy how the west was won even though it was done in a way i don't approve of there is another hideout related multiplayer trophy and this one's called Have Gun Will Travel. For this, I'll have to complete every hideout in a single public free roam session. It didn't take me long to complete all of them, ending with Fort Mercer. But something's clearly wrong, because I'm not seeing a trophy. Damn it, where the hell is my trophy? Don't tell me the game's glitched out again. Maybe if I jump around with this guy, it'll pop? Nope, still no trophy. In my attempt to get this trophy, I'm now going through every single hideout for the fourth time. I swear, I have hideout PTSD by now. Here's me doing Pike's Basin again. And here's even more exciting Fort Mercer gameplay for like the 15th time. And here's Tumbleweed. Okay, I'm not going to bore you by showing you every single hideout, so let's just skip to the final one for my trophy, which is Nosilada. Done! My trophy should pop any time now. Still waiting. Just chilling by my cow, waiting for that trophy. Alright, what the hell is going on here? Is something broken with my copy of the game? Is this like an ancient glitch I've never heard of? Does this mean I can never get the platinum? What's going on? Oh, that's right! I just realized I totally forgot about Solomon's Folly. This entire time I was doing every hideout over and over again without once visiting Solomon's Folly. Look, it's right there on my map. Solomon's Folly. It's exclusive to the PS3 and Game of the Year versions of Red Dead Redemption. And after completing it, my trophy popped right away. I feel so dumb right now because like it was right in front of me the entire time. Moving on from that disaster, it's time to unlock a trophy that's primarily luck based. For the trophy posse up, I'll need to create a posse with a maximum number of members, which is eight. Why is this one luck based? Well, I'm basically inviting random people to my gang and hoping that they take my off. First off, there aren't a whole lot of people to choose from since this is a 14 year old game and it's a miracle that the servers are even alive. Secondly, people are often AFK or doing their own quests and challenges, so they may not even accept my invitation. After lots and lots of waiting, I finally managed to convince eight people to join my posse. And I met some interesting players along the way. Hey. Hey, are you, are you a YouTuber? Are you a YouTuber? Just jump if you are a YouTuber. Hold on guys, um, make sure you like and subscribe and we should play more Red Dead. The next two trophies were fairly easy. First, I got the Quick and Everyone Else trophy by being the highest scorer in three free-for-all matches in a row. For this, I just got a friend and I together in a lobby of Gold Rush for three easy wins in a row.
Then I got the Go Team trophy by being on the winning team for four consecutive matches. This was similar to the last one where me and a friend just took opposing sides and since a team of one also counts as a full team, I popped the trophy after getting my wins. Now it's time for something just a little more challenging as I'll be trying to not kill anyone with my gun. The trophy slow on the draw requires that I get 10 assists in a single hideout in a public free roam session. God, just saying hideout makes me want to toss my controller through a wall. All right, pay attention now because here's the game plan. First step, get the weakest gun you can find. It needs to be an absolute pea shooter so you don't accidentally kill the AI. Second step, join too late and get seven assists instead of 10, failing the requirements. Third step, hit up a different hideout, die. Realize that your assist counter resets whenever you die. Rage silently as you assault a giant cactus. Repeat. Turns out I'm really bad at not taking lives because it took like a dozen separate attempts to get 10 assists to pop the trophy. All right, there are just two multiplayer trophies left until I get the platinum. And scorching my fellow adventurer and hacking him to pieces has given me the necessary energy to complete my next trophy, which is hit the trail. To unlock this, I must get from Blackwater to Escalera before sundown in a free roam session. In a friendly session, this journey would be a piece of cake, but we're not in a friendly session, we're in a public session. And if you're familiar with online multiplayer lobbies of any kind, you know things never go according to plan. As I get on my horse to begin this journey, I'm hoping that I don't get sniped, blown up, or lassoed midway through my journey. Thankfully, the relatively sparse population of RDR1's online servers will play to my benefit because there aren't a whole lot of people left to grief me. This is just a really long ride, but every kill notification I see puts me on edge. I know that the margins for this journey are slim, and even if I don't die, the interference would be enough to delay me and fail the trophy. After the most tension-packed ride of all time, I make it to Escalera at 5.30 p.m. to watch the sunset just in the nick of time. And there's my trophy. Awesome. The last trophy, Most Wanted, is considered one of the hardest in the game to obtain, right alongside How the West Was Won, which I already got for hitting level 50. For this one, I'll have to become a public enemy for 10 minutes and make it out alive. If you don't know what a public enemy is, I'm essentially putting a giant bullseye in my back for the entire server to see. I get this status by either killing six other players or racking up a $1,000 bounty, and it can only be done in public free roam, no friendly sessions allowed. To make things even more difficult, your bounty can for some reason randomly disappear even if you kill a bunch of AI characters. Since I'm already in Escalera after doing the last trophy, I've got a plan. This is a big hotspot with loads of NPCs all over the place, allowing me to rack up a massive bounty in no time. See, I'm already a public enemy. Next, I need to do two things. First, I must hold my wanted level for 10 minutes and pray that the AI doesn't lose interest in me. Then I have to get rid of my wanted level to escape and pop the trophy. Step one wasn't too hard as I found a nice location on this tower that allowed me to take cover. I shielded myself for 10 minutes as the NPCs unleashed a hailstorm of bullets at me. Occasionally, an NPC would climb up the ladder, only for me to drop him back down, like that. But then it became quite annoying as the wave of NPCs didn't seem to end and I was well past the 10 minute threshold. This made it impossible for me to reset my wanted level and I couldn't get the trophy unless I escaped alive. So here's a neat little trick for you. Pay close attention as I open the menu and select the outfitter. That's it guys. I've successfully moved out of harm's way and I popped the most wanted trophy. And there's my platinum trophy for Red Dead Redemption. I am officially a legend of the West. Thank you so much for sharing this journey with me. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. I have plenty of Red Dead content for you and platinum trophies.